Welcome, I'm Alicia Greenfield, and I'm joined today with Angus Stewart and by a distance, Caitlin Beaupre. Today, Good Friday, we gather to meditate on the cross. We'll begin in prayer, join in song, and then hear the testimony of the Passion according to John's Gospel. Then, with Caitlin's music as our muse, we'll invite you to notice what it is that you bring to the cross today. We'll conclude together in prayer and song. First, as is our tradition, we will begin with a moment of silence. Silence to bring our whole selves present to worship. Silence to notice that we are surrounded by our community in faith, from a distance, but still active in our lives. Silent to be present to God, who is with us and active in the world. We begin with a moment of silence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray the colic for Good Friday as we say together, Gracious and eternal God, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross and grant us to rejoice in the benefits of his passion through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. to God and to the 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my cry, and from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer, by night as well, but I get no rest. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to them, he hears them. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him, and they shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. The following takes place after Jesus has spoken to his disciples at the Last Supper. Having loved his own who are in the world, he loved them to the end. He gave them a pattern of life by washing their feet. He gave them a new commandment, love one another as he has loved them. He told them he is the way and the truth and the life. He is the true vine and they must abide in him as he abides in them. He promised them the Holy Spirit to be with them and to be in them and to lead them into all truth. And he prayed for them, that they may be one as he and the Father are one. After Jesus spoke these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kedron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, 
because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers with temple guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and said to them, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I am he. And they stepped back and fell to the ground. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing there with them. Again, Jesus asked, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. So Jesus said, I told you that I am he. So if you're looking for me, let these others go. So he fulfilled the word he'd spoken. I did not lose a single one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Then the soldiers, their officer and the temple guards, arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest. Caiaphas was the one who had said, it is better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed. Since the other disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You're not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Now the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I've always taught in synagogues or in the temple where everyone comes together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me. They know what I said. One of the guards standing near him struck him on the face saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus said, if I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. And they asked him, You're not also one of his disciples, are you? Peter denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? But again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. They took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out and asked them, What accusation do you make against this man? And they answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves. Judge him according to your law. And the chief priest said, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This fulfilled what Jesus had said 
when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered his headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate said, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the authorities. But as it is, my kingdom is not found here. Pilate said, So you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who listens to my voice belongs to the truth. Pilate said, What is truth? After he said that, he went out and told the crowd, I find no case against this man, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you this king of the Jews? And they shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They dressed him in a purple robe and they kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! and striking him on the face. Then Pilate went outside again and said to the crowd, Look, I am bringing him out to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the temple guards saw him, they began shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. Then the chief priest said, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus didn't answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the crowd kept shouting, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat down on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement. Gabbatha in Hebrew. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to them, Here is your king. And they began to shout, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, 
We have no king but the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, they went out to what is called the place of the skull, Golgotha. There, they crucified him. And with him, two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate had an inscription written and put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then he read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. Chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven of one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. And this fulfilled the scripture. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his lips. When he tasted the wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the religious authorities did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and their bodies removed. So they came, broke the legs of the first and the other who were crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers took his spear and pierced his side. And at once, blood and water came out. The one who saw this has testified so that you may believe. His testimony is true. And he knows that he tells the truth. My 
found him cradled in a lamplit barn. His mother Mary rocked him. The child was God they hung today on a big high cross. And now, in the words our Savior taught us, let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray our closing prayer. Pour out your abundant blessing, O Lord, upon us, your people, as we carry with us the memory of the death of your Son, in the sure and certain hope of resurrection. Grant us pardon and peace, Strengthen our faith and give us the assurance of eternal salvation. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>